November 13th, 2012. Dave Krupa wakes up and gets ready for work. And about 6.30 a.m., he gives Carrie a kiss and he leaves for work for the day. Carrie Farber was his girlfriend of two weeks and they were getting along so well that she sometimes spent the night at his apartment. It was conveniently close to her work, which was just half a mile away. She's on the couch, got her laptop out, she's doing her thing. So I gotta go to work, so I give her a kiss and I say, I'll see you later. I had expected to see Terry that evening. Mid-morning, Dave received a text and he glanced at it. It was a message from Carrie. She texts me and says, uh, let's move in together, which was very left field because we had already talked about that not happening. As soon as I can, I text her back and say, I'm not interested, I can't do that. We haven't known each other nearly long enough for that. And almost immediately I get a message back that says, fine, I hate you, I'm dating someone else, I don't want to see you anymore, uh, you know, go away, lots of profanity. I didn't know what to think. I was blown away. She just changed very quickly from the fun and happy person that he had known just that morning. It was a day, maybe a day and a half of radio silence, and then my phone starts blowing up with texts from Carrie. Along the lines of, I hate you, you ruined my life, you're a terrible person. I thought, okay, I don't need this in my life. I dodged a bullet. They'd been dating for just two weeks and he figured that maybe she'd been putting on an act and she wasn't who he thought she was. So who was Carrie Farver? She grew up in this small town called Macedonia, Iowa. Macedonia is a very small town. It's a very nice place to raise kids because you can um, let your kids walk down the street without worrying. They can ride their bikes around town and just a friendly place to live. Carrie was very close to her mother, Nancy. They talked every day. She had a lot of friends. She was very gregarious. By all accounts, Carrie lived fully. When you look at the photograph, she's vivacious. Her hairstyles are constantly changing. She's experimenting with her look and with her life. You noticed Carrie when she walked into her room. She had a laugh, she had a smile. You were drawn to her. In an interview that Carrie did with her local paper for her high school graduation, she said she wanted to be known as always having a smile on her face and for being a little bit crazy. And all of her friends and family say Carrie was whip smart. Early on, she was, I mean, even in high school, I remember Carrie being amazing with numbers and computers. There was a turning point in Carrie's life when she was 22 years old and got pregnant. The relationship with the father didn't work out and Carrie became a single mom. She decided she was gonna bring the baby up by herself. She was gonna have that baby no matter what and be the best mom she could be. Max was always at the forefront of what Carrie did. He was her number one. She just doted on him all the time. But I think she was a little overwhelmed just being on her own in her late 20s. She started developing depression. Carrie had been diagnosed in her 20s with bipolar disorder. Uh, there was one point when she just pretty much was underneath the covers for uh, a good week, maybe 10 days. She was scared about it, but at the same time knew that she was taking all the steps that she needed to, to keep it in check and under control. She had been seeing therapists and was on medication. There was a couple of times when she just, she would stop taking the medication because she said, Mom, it just, I feel like I'm just numb. But by 2012, Carrie was in a very good place. She landed a good job as a computer programmer. She was super excited and talked a lot about how that was going to be kind of a life changer for her and for Max, being able to provide in a better way. Max was just going into high school, 
Carrie was so excited about classes he was taking and the sports that he was playing. Ride away, Max. She was his cheerleader. There's some video of Carrie urging on Max as he's water skiing. Carrie also had a new guy she was dating, Dave Krupa. In November, Carrie asked her mother, Nancy, to keep her son, Max, for a few days while she stayed with Dave so she could be closer to work. Right around the same time that Dave got the text from Carrie asking to move in, Carrie sent a text to her mother, Nancy. I started getting text messages that said that she was taking a job in Kansas, which totally threw me. When I said something to Max about it, he said, well, she had kind of looked at a job down in Kansas. He thought possibly there was a job down there she went to. So I texted her back, and she would not call me and talk to me. Normally, I would talk to her at least once a day. It was starting to concern me that she wasn't calling me. But Nancy figured she'd see Carrie soon because Carrie's half-brother was getting married in just a few days. Her son, Max, was to be an usher, and she promised Max that she would return for the wedding. I was needing to know when she was going to pick up her son to go to this wedding. She wasn't answering me. Carrie didn't show up to pick up Max, and she didn't call. Everybody was stunned. That was the final straw for Nancy. That's when I reported her missing. I called the sheriff's office, and they had somebody come out, and they took my report. Nancy mentioned to the police that Carrie had been diagnosed as bipolar. I said, well, yes, she was on medication. The police jumped on that and said, when somebody who's bipolar stops taking their meds, sometimes it can start of some really erratic behavior. They didn't take it too seriously. She was a grown woman. She was still communicating with people. I just wasn't getting a very urgent reaction from the police, and they just weren't concerned about it. Things are going to get stranger and scarier. Carrie writes, my favorite thing to do is stand outside your window and stare at you. Don't know how many times I've changed my phone number. She was no longer just ranting at a boyfriend that things didn't go well with. She was flat out stalking him. What do you do when somebody invades every space of your life? This man's life is about to become terrifying. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.